Hello everybody, thanks for coming today. My name is Daryl Duke and I'm from Stepstone Technologies. We're the makers of Zen Foundation. And today I'm here to talk about how Atlassian is using Confluence and Zen to rebrand and comply with marketing department demands to extend the reach and usefulness of Confluence outside the organization, which is a mouthful. So we like to say, how to kick asterisks using Confluence. Okay, first a little background. Um, who am I and what is Stepstone? Um, as I said, my name is Daryl. I'm one of the founders of Stepstone. We're based in Seattle, and you can tell from my gray hair that we were founded sometime in the last century. Um, we've been doing custom development for our cu customers, but more importantly, we've discovered Atlassian in 2005, and we partnered with them immediately because we could see what they were doing with their products and the approach they were taking and how valuable that was. Now, we're a little bit of an odd uh, pairing with Atlassian because our focus is on what we like to call the rest of the organization. As you know, Atlassian aims for the development teams. Um, they're all about making happy nerds. And from Stepstone's side, we work with everyone else in the organization. So naturally, we have a confluence focus because it's the best tool, um, or the most appropriate tool, I should say, for uh, the non-development teams and the broader organization. So really, from the beginning of our relationship with Atlassian, we've been simplifying and skinning and doing integrations for non-technical user communities for our clients. Okay, so we all know the benefits of Confluence. <laughs> okay, so I promise that there's a tie-in with this guy, and it's not just that he's rocking a Confluence Charlie tattoo. All right, so Confluence, really quickly, we know the value of the benefits. Uh, centralized knowledge, getting uh, knowledge out of heads and out of email and into a system. Um, it's got great social features for collaborating, um, an insanely powerful new editor in the Confluence 4.0 tool. Um, it's also got a great search utility that not only does the wiki content, but all the attachments. And plus, there's a vibrant plugins community, which means there's about a bazillion other amazing features in Confluence, all of which gives the tool virtually unlimited flexibility, which is a lot like this guy. Okay, so Confluence has unlimited application, we say that, right? But why is that? Well, it's because Atlassian's sweet spot is the development teams. So in order to be successful in that marketplace, Atlassian had to make Confluence Uber. Right? And they made it so powerful, it's become the Swiss army knife to end all Swiss army knives. And, and since it is so powerful, you can practically do anything with it. And so we believe that everyone should be using it, both inside and outside the organization. But there is a snag. And that happens when we go to push Confluence outside of the development teams and into the rest of the organization. This is a familiar story, right? Uh, how many of you have looked around the organization and seen people still emailing Word documents around like it's 1999 or something and said, come on, you people, stop doing that. This is stupid. We've got Confluence. We've got this crazy, powerful wiki. It's centralized, blah, 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 all the value and benefits that you get there. And then what happens? You get punched in the nose for your efforts. And, and why is that? And that's because to the non-technical user, Confluence often seems hard or unfamiliar or knobby. Sometimes they say it's ugly, ugly or too complicated. My personal favorite ironic responses are that it's too flexible or too powerful. And then there's the worst case scenario, and that's when you're in the rest of the organization and you're doing battle against a prettier but lamer wiki that has uh, less features and is less useful, but it has a nicer face on it. And that tends to appeal to the outside organization, and so you get this um, war going. And the person who's advocating the prettier one is often the executive with the checkbook, and um, writes that check and then that puts Confluence at risk in the organization. So you either have to maintain two wikis, which a lot of IT departments won't do, um, and so you get uh, kicked out of the rest of the organization, but you kind of have to maintain it yourself as in the development team. And that's not very fun. Um, so we call this whole thing, uh, euphemistically, the user adoption challenges of Confluence in the organization. Okay, so what has this got to do with Atlassian? I mean, they have a development team focus, it's all development team users, so Confluence should be just fine, right? Well, it turns out that large groups of technical users or infrequent or casual technical users behave exactly the same way as non-technical users. And Atlassian is facing this now because their market is growing so fast that at any given time, there's always a large group of potential customers unfamiliar with their products but doing the evaluations, okay? And then meanwhile, uh, web standards continue to climb higher and higher over the years where we see things that are now more shinier, they're simpler, they're more fun, they're more act attractive, more interactive, all those kinds of things. And it's important to note that Atlassian does get this. They understand these challenges. They did a rebranding last fall for a great new website look. But unfortunately, not all of their web presences are projecting this new brand yet. Okay, so... 
back up a second and as, as propeller heads, as technical people, we ask, why is this important to us? Why do we care about marketing? It's because, and we do care, it turns out, because we want to invest our time into lasting technologies. Right? We know that the best technologies don't always win in the marketplace. And Atlassian is acutely aware that sending us the wrong message can, can hurt their um, sales and their uh, penetration into the market because everybody knows, including propeller heads, that bad marketing today means gone tomorrow. Like I said, Atlassian is facing these same issues with their own web presence. And so why is that? Well, one reason is that they vigorously practice um, something called dog fooding. And this is a practice that says, if I refuse to eat it, how can I justify feeding it to my customers? Right. And it's a simple and effective quality assurance practice because automated tests only get you so far. You really need to get some real world action on a product before giving it to your customers. And with Confluence or with Atlassian's, you know, many hundreds of folks internally and externally using it, much larger uh, user base, um, and very complicated data, lots of spaces, lots of uh, instances and stuff, you get a, a really solid uh, exercising of the product before they become uh, publicly released. So it's a great uh, QA step that they take. Another reason is that Confluence lacks, specifically lacks these branding and simplifying features for a good reason, is that they do not want to compromise its appropriateness in the development teams. This is a conscious choice by Atlassian. There's a constant internal debate going on as to what's the right level of simplicity and, and prettiness that isn't going to compromise its, uh, its utility and its Swiss army knife capacity that, uh, that the developers demand. So we're kind of stuck then, because while dog fooding may be great for bonding with your existing customers, the challenge is how do you avoid smearing dog food on your potential future customers? Well, this is Confluence, so of course there's a solution. And so just to recap quickly, the challenge is how can Atlassian continue to use Confluence for its public facing stuff and, and demonstrate it's a great tool, yet make it simple and pretty and branded at the same time? Well, to attempt this, Atlassian chose Zen Foundation. So this is an ongoing process. Um, there's five sites in the pipeline so far. A few more we're talking about uh, making that happen too. So it's gaining momentum. Um, let's take a look at one of those. All right, the first site we're going to be looking at is the developer documentation site, which you've all seen. It's the developer.atlassian.com, or DAC as they like to call it. But um, somewhat ironically for the first uh, application of this uh, process, this site is definitely aimed at the development teams. It's a massively complex uh, site with um, multiple products and multiple versions having to be managed, plus has to absorb and integrate a bunch of automated generated content. It's all the APIs for all those products and versions. And what's also interesting about this one is that um, this was started even before Atlassian's overall rebranding initiative was completed. And the DAC team knew that they had to make DAC easier to maintain both for their own sanity, but also because they have such a large group of consumers of this content that they had that large group behaving like non-technical user problem that they wanted to solve. Okay, so let's take a look real quickly here. This is a screenshot of one of the original pages on that de development site. And you can see that it's using the Confluence of standard documentation theme, um, but it's clearly not meeting any kind of brand standards. It's the classic Confluence presentation. It's very functional, but there's no frills. Um, and, and to be honest, there's a few hoops that you have to jump through to get layouts and things like that going, like you see in this slide. Okay, so they created some mockups of how they wanted it to look like exactly, and, and then they started looking for tools um, like Zen Foundation, which for me is an, always a nerve-wracking thing um, to design before choosing a tool. Obviously, the, the co capacity of a tool can affect the design, but it was a great design, and it fit right into Zen, fortunately. So, so now, as a result, um, this is a much more appealing landing page than what we were just looking at. Okay. Another shot in this uh, site now, you can see that they have a, a very simple and non-intimidating way to search the site and to navigate to all the products and their versions. It's a very clean, very appealing uh, look to it. Okay, here's a basic page layout example. You can see that it's attractive, it's obvious, it's non-intimidating, and these are all really great concepts when thinking about training and user adoption. So the end result was that the new design made it easier for users to, to stay oriented with better organization and so forth. Um, it was a complex subject, but still a simple user experience. Um, it looked great, and of course it was easier to maintain in the end. OK, 
Okay, the next example we'll look at is the Atlassian user group site, and this is for you guys out there. Um, this is something that's in process. Um, and hopefully you've all met Brittany Walker, the uh, Augmaster. Um, she wanted to improve uh, web support and also to try to resolve the tug between the different uh, vehicles we have to co coordinate this between Confluence and Meetup and Facebook and so on. Um, and in addition to that, there's a uh, desire to automate and integrate more of the AUG management custom features into that, and uh, you need a, a platform that you're controlling like Confluence to be able to do that as opposed to trying to wrangle that with uh, fa Facebook or Meetup, one of the other tools that you don't have a, a plug-in capacity for. Um, and the other thing is, is that there's now over 90 AUGs that Brittany's trying to facilitate, so her very sanity is at stake, and we don't like that. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, AUG site from about a month or so ago. Um, you can see that there's some branding in there, but it's not nearly as slick as the new Atlassian at Doncom makeover. So we built the Zen brand to mimic the new Atlassian branding exactly. And once we did that, it was just a matter of shaping the existing content, adding a few graphics or reorganizing those, and then just using the built-in design tools in Zen to make this happen. So now the AUG site has a richness to it that matches the community it serves. Okay, here's another before shot. Hi, Mike. And the after shot. And I just love how Mike puts the A in Atlassian in his little video spot there. Okay, here's another example. In this one, we see where having good design tools in the wiki really helps to manage complex content because we're looking here at um, a, a page that contains all the regions and user groups. It's all there, but it's not exactly at a glance. And then taking the same page with Zen um, and using the built-in point-and-click tools, we can visually manage the complex content to give it the appearance of simplicity. Now this, of course, makes it both easier to manage and consume. And then one last example. And this is where complex organization or navigation can be disoriented. And poor Charles down there below the fold, he's uh, not having a good time. And again, exactly the same content, just adding the design tools makes a really big difference. And of course, it's all seamless with Atlassian's gorgeous new brand. So I think this is a great example of using design not to dumb things down, but to reduce the apparent complexity of the information presented. Um, it, it also respects the community and site visitors by reflecting quality, which I think shows that Atlassian cares a great deal about the OGS. And of course, it's easier on Brittany, and somehow for all of this, it's got to translate into more beer, right? Okay, What's else, what else is coming down the pipeline? So the knowledge bases, Jeremy Largman, who you all probably know, he's getting started um, moving all the product knowledge bases into Zen. Um, and this is gonna be really easy because we're simply reusing the Atlassian brand from the AUG initiative, so we just have to apply it and start reshaping the content. And you guys all know about the FedEx Days initiative that Atlassian puts on, um, providing resources to sign up and do online packages for managing FedEx Days. But this is a kind of a cool thing because there'll be cloning space templates or spaces that create separate FedEx Day portals for other companies to use, outside companies. Um, and those can be private to those companies or public if they choose. And, and that, is, to me, is a great demonstration of my favorite use case for Confluence, and that is how it can support collaboration with external teams. Um, and this is really hard, I think, to do credibly without branding, or many organizations are reluctant to do so. But it's a great way to use Confluence. Okay, another thing that's coming up soon is the DevDen, the new DevDen piece. Um, it's a similar story. Um, essentially, these are going to be get-togethers or potentially hackathon parties. But the point is that this is something that's aimed at the hardcore development side of Atlassian. Um, and again, they want to make things appealing and easy to use. And that's that's going to demonstrate Atlassian's high regard for the core customer base by, by giving them a nice experience like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is jump into a quick demo of Zen, uh, just to show you a couple of things that you can't see in the screenshots. Okay, first I'd like to give a quick uh, overview of a handful of sites that we've built or others have built using Zen Foundation to give you a sense of the visual flexibility and the power of the design tools and capacities in Zen. Um, we all get stuck kind of in a mental rut thinking about how Confluence does look and so it's hard to imagine what it could look like when we have tools that get us outside of that box. All right, so the first example is of course our website, the Zen Foundation website. Here's another example we built for another client. 
and another one. Um, here's a services expert from, uh, or Atlassian service expert, uh, Red Radish Consulting. You guys may all know Emily. Another Atlassian expert at Fusions. Uh, Ellen's also in the room tonight. And uh, here's another uh, Atlassian expert. Um, unfortunately, Celix folks couldn't be here with us tonight because they uh, live in Austria. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is take a look at Zen Foundation really quickly. We're looking at uh, here uh, one of the built-in brands. It's pretty generic, but you can see it still looks really nice. Um, just a few things to get out of the way. Uh, we've taken all of the uh, Confluence uh, components and put those together into a nice toolbar at the top. Um, and then, of course, for navigation through the site, we've added the ability to create menus quite simply. Um, those menus can get as complex as you need to, um, and those are really easy to maintain just a, com uh, just a Confluence page edit. Um, also, what we wanted to do is to break down the uh, viewing and the editing experiences and the design experience in Zen. So we've taken and allowed you to break content in a page into sections. Um, and one of the things that's important about that is, is that um, you know, a page like this has a pretty complex layout. And imagine in Wiki Markup or in the new editor even taking and moving these com components around. It's pretty complicated. So what we did is we implemented a quick drag and drop facility so that you just grab the section, move it to where you want it to be, and then let it go. And you can see here that I'm also dragging uh, the sections out of the right column. And when I do that, Zen adapts and realizes that I'm actually looking for a two-column layout, so it just does what you'd expect it to do, quite simply. Okay, another thing that we can look at is what we call micro-content editing. And similar to the design aspect of it is when I'm editing the content of one of these sections, I don't want to have to be bogged down by all the re awareness of all the rest of what's on the page and the macros and structures to contain that. So what we've done is we've given every section its own pencil. So when I click on that, I just zero in and I'm kind of core sampling what's on the page, so it's a very, very simple um, piece of content to look at. I don't have to be intimidated by all the rest of the control structures in there. And I can just add things and edit and go along my merry way. And when I'm all done, I have a very simple editor experience. Now, of course, we're looking here at the Confluence 4 editor, the new one, and there's no wiki markup. It's um, got lots of great features. It's super easy to use. And layering that on top of the micro content editing, I believe that this is the simplest and best online editing experience available in any product anywhere. Okay, one other thing you may have noticed when I started moving sections around and the same thing when I edit content is that I get this draft watermark at the top and a check, box, a check mark and a, a trash can appear. Um, and that's because as soon as I make edits, I don't publish to the world, I go immediately into a draft mode. And so those changes are private to me. If someone else logged into the wiki right now, they would still see the old three column layout with the old content in it. Um, in addition to that, there's also some fancy section designers. I'll just give you a quick peek at what that looks like. Um, basically what happens is you are going into a section, you pull up on screen a view of exactly what that section's width is, and then you have options like backgrounds and borders. You can click to turn those on and off. Um, you can add more images um, and use CSS-like concepts to position those or repeat them. Um, of course, the boxes themselves have width and height and margins and padding and um, kinds of things you want to do. There's extra CSS classes to pick up styles in the brand. The whole idea is that you're making it point and click and designed for somebody who doesn't have to really get, roll up their sleeves and get into the code or go in and hack the stuff on the backside, which is really painful to do, obviously. Um, and trying to make the design of the site and the design of each section and the richness of that just as easy to edit as Confluence 4.0 editors makes it easy to edit simple content. Um, and of course, there's a lot of macros for design presentation. Um, we saw uh, some examples of that um, briefly when we went through the screenshot tour. So I won't go through those now, but just there's obviously from those designs, you can tell that there's quite a bit going on, and Zen has tools to facilitate all of that. Okay, and that's all I'll show you today for the demo. So the idea behind adding Zen to Confluence is simple. We want to extend the reach of Confluence to everybody by making it easy for graphic designers, not Java or Velocity coders, we wanted to make it fun for casual users, so not everybody has to be a uber ninja wiki Jedi. And because if we turn the ultimate content management tool, which is Confluence, into the ultimate branding and web presence tool, and we can make it simple, then, then we can get everyone collaborating together. And after all, isn't that why you bought a wiki in the first place? Well, thanks for listening, everybody.